flesh, which would have been so easy to do. I mean, I, you know, you're kind of sizing up people. Can I take them? If I say something, am I going to be able to take them? You know? <laughs> now, you know, these are the true confessions of Dan Green. <laughs> but these things go through your mind, you know. It, 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 in my, it, what I'm getting into, you know, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he'll reap it. If you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. So to the Spirit, you'll reap life. Yes. So I said, I made a choice to walk in the Spirit, to obey God at that moment. It was a hard choice, too, because yeah. I just wanted to ridicule Him. And I said, I'm sorry. I said, when I'm done, I'll make sure that I blow your truck off. And you see, that was the end of it. What can you say after that? Right. You know, we can easily diffuse uh, an argument an explosion. I mean, this is in marriages. This is in, you know, all kinds of relationships. You know, there are times when you're at the, you're at the, ed at the edge of a precipice, <laughs> like, a, like a cliff kind of thing, and, or the, the edge of something, and you know, and you're thinking in your mind, hey, if I go this, if I take another step, it's going to be ugly, right? With a, with a person, maybe you're talking, it's a disagreement, whatever. But it was like right at that moment, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and I obeyed and and it brought great I mean I had peace inside and I had joy and so I went over and I blew off the other two pieces of grass <laughs> and I went my way and I got home and I was able to share that with my boys to say that hey you know this is a real life situation and so walking in the spirit is a it's a common sense thing it's not some you know, oh, I can tell he's walking in the spirit. His, his feet are six inches off the ground and he's hovering. <laughs> or he's got a halo over his head. You know, we have these ideas of what walking in the spirit means. And sometimes we just say, well, I'm not spiritual. I can't walk in the spirit. But to me, walking in the spirit is, uh, it's obeying the Lord at every moment. Right. You know, it's, it's nothing s spooky. It's just like that. I had a decision to make there. I didn't feel any Holy Ghost goosebumps, but I knew what the right thing was to do, and that was to apologize. Because you know what? In the future, or even then, God may use what I did there in His life. You know, maybe everybody's mean to Him. And maybe that's why He's so mean. You remember that testimony of that man I shared Jesus with at the, at the lawnmower shop? Hard man. Never smiled. Always in a bad mood. But when we began to talk about the Lord, his, his countenance totally changed. So, those people that you think are uh, difficult cases, well, that's, that's the Lord's specialty. See, what, they're, what, what we're looking for in that situation is somebody to, to really, truly obey the Lord and to walk in the Spirit. You know what? When it comes to marriages, marriages... What God's looking for is somebody to <clears throat> obey Him. Somebody to grab a hold of Him in a bad marriage. Somebody to grab a hold of Him and believe Him for His promises. You know, I'm a product of, I had a bad marriage. But I believed God and I hung on to His promises. And I was willing to obey God in the midst of great uh, uh, adversity. And even when things looked very, very bad. And so... You know, we, are we willing to obey God is the question. And that's always the question, isn't it? It's not a matter of, is, can, can God do something in, in this person? Or can God do something in my life or in this situation? God can do anything. All things are possible for God. God is not limited. One time Jesus said uh, to a man, He said, Lord, if you can do anything, help my son. He, and Jesus said to him, if you can believe. All things are possible to him that believes. You know, it's like Jesus always puts the ball back into our court. Right? Lord, what do I do with this person? I've told you what to do. Love your enemies. See, I had an opportunity to love my enemy, that man. But, you know, he really wasn't my enemy, but he wasn't in a sense. And so, here in Luke chapter 6, I want to look at Uh, let's see, verse 46. Uh -huh. 
He's, Jesus is speaking here and He says, And why call you me Lord, Lord, and, and you do not the things which I say? Um, now, I want to turn over now to Matthew chapter 7. And I want to look at this, this same thing, but he, he gives a little bit more. He goes a little bit more into the teaching. So remember that. He says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do the things that I say? Those are two opposites, aren't they? You don't call somebody Lord, or boss, or master, and then don't do the things they say. Verse 21, chapter 7, Matthew. He says, Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So here he, he uses, it's, uh, gives a little bit more. He says that he that does the will of my Father in heaven. Um, and then he goes on and says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, and in your name have cast out devils, and in your name many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And then Jesus gives a parable of the, of the two men, one who built his house in the sand and the other on the rock. So here you see a group of people, and this is what I mean, that's a scary verse, isn't it? A group of people who are calling Jesus Lord. And it's not just that they're calling Him Lord, but they are doing things. Right? They're, they're, he says there, haven't we done these things in your name? We prophesied in your name, cast out devils, uh, done many wonderful works. And yet Jesus says, I, did, I, did, I never knew you. You see, men will do almost anything except what they're supposed to do. Except what's right. You know, I can find anything to fill my life up with, but the right thing is the challenge to do. And, and people will do wonderful works. But the Lord says, He that does the will of my Father. In, uh, in 2 Timothy, Paul speaks to Timothy and he says, this, The foundation of God stands sure. It means it stands steady, strong. Having this seal... This is the seal of God's foundation.